Hello YouTube, welcome to this video which actually is a tutorial uh, where I'm going to cover of how you go about making a uh, mobile phone app uh, in particular we are looking at creating an Android app for which we require actually a bunch of software um, like as you see on the screen is Adobe Fireworks CS3 uh, we would be using this very frequently for creating backgrounds and uh, for creating icons and uh, other required symbols and characters. Uh, in order to go and make this um, app, we're going to have a team and um, the team that I have chosen is to go and create a simple educational app uh, for children who would like to practice times tables, um, yet to make it look attractive. Uh, to them and um, they would use some swipe features um, the regular app features um, that are available on either um, Android or on um, uh, or on uh, iOS app okay so what you're seeing here on the screen is a little background that I went and created in uh, Adobe Fireworks actually um, these are all called as the vector images I created the Sun there and um, apparently you could go and change the shading inside the sun and um, I created some rays around it and I'm going to go put this back in place so to make it look colorful and attractive to little children I created these vector images the clouds and a rainbow and um, a kind of a grassy hill in the background and you have this sandy beach and also this uh, ocean backdrop okay one thing that I want you to note here is um, if you look at this is the canvas area and the canvas uh, size I have chosen is 480 by uh, 800 that is 480 is the width and 800 is the height and in a short while from now you would actually know why the canvas size is set to 480 width and uh, 800 of uh, 800 pixels of height so ideally um, yeah this is how you go and create a background for your app and a colorful app you can actually go and animate it uh, but I'm gonna have only one animation which actually is on my page two I put some bunch of uh, boards here that I'm gonna go and animate uh, and use it into my uh, in, in use it in my app but prior to that I'll go back here again and uh, this is how I went and created the vector images as you see I created the rainbow and uh, I converted it into a um, I, I'm a flattened that selection but right now I have all the required elements um, that I'm going to go and put into my into the app so that's about creating the background and I'll just quickly go and create this animation that I would be using. Uh, I, I didn't have to have uh, such a such a long or a, such a huge canvas uh, as you see my uh, symbol here. The width is 880 and the height is only 73. I'm going to modify that canvas size to 100 height. So I'm just going to call it 100 and this is how it's going to look all of my uh, other oops control z z i'll just copy this first i'll say control x and then later i would go and change this height to 100 and then i'm going to change the view to 100 percent now if i say control v i'll get back all of my objects so i'm going to put this like this and put it like this and also I'm going to change the canvas background to transparent so that's now transparent and I got these boats that are going to be moving from the right of the screen to the left so okay let's go here before we go we're going to go and render it I would say I would call this GIF adaptive 256 and we're going to say here alpha transparency and you will know why i set it to alpha transparency eventually and here we'll select the 
we will select a transparent background. Now, I got this in place. You see the frames here. I got only one frame here. And as you see, I got those boards there. I can actually go and extend them. Control C and Control V. I'll have other bunch of boards here. Oops. Look at that. So I'm gonna put them all together in place and select both of them and push F8 on my keyboard, which actually converts it into a symbol. It's a symbol one, don't worry, just so push OK. And that's one long symbol. So now I'm gonna go here. Uh, I can decide on the number of anime, uh, number of frames that I wanted it to be. I'll say right click, animation, animate selection, I would say 50 frames. I'll get a smoother animation if I'm gonna make it 50 frames. Let's go and see. Yeah, it's gonna go move from there to till there and say 100. And let's see, it's gonna be like, yeah, I got this fast moving uh, boats. To make them go a bit slower, what I could do is I would go and actually reduce the motion. See? Now I can I have actually got this board moving. Now to create an animated GIF, I would say save as and I would call it as animated GIF. I'm gonna have this, I'm, I'm gonna call this as boards. Always remember that all your project files, you would be better off having it in one particular location. And this is really very important when you're gonna go and upload uh, or publish your uh, app. Say for example here, I got this table here. Um, there are no animated GIFs here at the moment. This is the only animated GIF that I'm gonna go create. So that's called as boards animated GIF. I'm gonna say save, and it actually has created that animated GIF for me. So while I already have that, I'll go back to my um, folder here. And in the folder, I'm going to see on the desktop, I've got this, I've got this table here. And on the table here, I have this animated GIF, boards animated GIF. I'll go open it with uh, Google Chrome. And I can actually see this boards moving and that's in the uh that's on the that's in the browser but if i'm going to go put this into my app i will not even have the white background that's the whole point so let's go back to our fireworks and um the pages i'll go back to the pages and so i got the animation on page two and i got the background on page one we are our focus the focus of this tutorial is not to show you how to go and create the animation or to go and create the background. The focus of this tutorial um, is to go and show you how to actually go and create a an Android app. But this is only prerequisite. Like you need to put like if you're going to go create an Android app, you would want something to be there in your Android app. So. One is the background. Definitely you're gonna be having a background without which you can't have your app. A second thing is there should be some sort of a attractive, um, attractive elements that you wanted to have in your app or a game. So this is what I'm intending to put. And um, so I'm, I'm gonna have an animation where the boards are gonna go moving in the ocean. So this is my simple theme. To go and extend and talk a little bit more about my theme and a little bit more about my app, this is going to be times tables. So when the user actually opens the times tables, um, there'll be uh, number one appearing here. Table number one would be appearing here. And there will be one table uh, shown throughout the screen. And uh, I'm going to use some strong colors to actually show the table itself. So but then when you swipe to right, uh, when you swipe to right, actually you will be moving uh, forward with your um, 
with your table numbers so 2 3 4 5 and it's going to go up to 20 so when you go to 20 and uh, after after you reach 20 uh, you would, even if you even if you swipe uh, you would be not going any further but if you swipe if you start swiping in the opposite direction um, your table numbers would be moving from 19 18 and goes all the way up to 1 so for the children to actually swipe to right or left at any time conveniently on any of the device it could be on the mobile phone or it could be even on the uh, tab Android tab um, at any time they can practice and um, that keeps them a bit engaged and they, they get a feeling of they, they have got full control on their learning and they can go to any table and eventually um, they can memorize the tables. Um, there's a scope for this app actually to extend beyond memorizing the tables, times tables. Um, there can also be some simple equations or there, there can also be some um, uh, little calculations that they, they could, the children could go and perform and we can also go and add the scoring feature to it. That, but that's a future uh, addition. I'm not going to include that into this app now. But for now, we're going to only go and create a uh, simple Android app with times tables so with no further delay let's go and start making our android app for which we would be needing a uh, uh, software called as uh, adobe animate cc and uh, let's get started with that so here we are in uh, adobe animate cc uh, 2018 and um, the this is where we're going to go and create our android app as you see there are several options here available to go create a html5 canvas or even action script 3 or air for desktop and our focus for this tutorial is air for android so when i go click on air for android it's going to go and create a new canvas for us and a new project for us to go and work with you can zoom in uh, to your requirements so to the 100 percent or to 50 percent whatever it is so this is our canvas I would like to draw your focus to the size of the canvas here, which is 480, the width and the height is 800. As you remember from the fireworks project that we where we went and created the background, that's exactly of the same size. As you see, the canvas is set to 480, in the width and um, 800 of the height. Okay, so that is the reason. Um, Keeping in mind the canvas size of your app, you go and make your uh, backgrounds. So these are the tools that you would be using in, in terms of making your uh, app. And um, you would be using the text tool today and uh, you would also be using um, some of the tools from this uh, menu here. And um, the most important part of this is the publish settings so and here you got the target and if you go actually into the publish settings you can see the target there as well and this is where you're going to go and configure your app at the moment it's saying the output name is untitled that's not what we want so what we would do here is file save as and um, let's take it to the same folder uh, in the desktop, I got the set project folder. All your files need to be in the project folder because when the at the at the time when the when this package is going to go and create your app, um, all the required files need to be in the same folder. So let's go now. Give a name to our app. I'll call it Times Table, and then I'm going to say Save. So once I saved that, it's it's here. And if I go now to go and configure that, you, you see there the times tables there and the app name is times table and the version number is one and it's saying portrait. And um, no, let's leave it like portrait and we don't select auto orientation at this stage. Auto orientation uh, is select when you actually, you when you want uh, the app to behave in a way um, that it shows the landscape and also in the portrait mode when the phone is turned. Let's go into the deployment now. Um, for the deployment here, we need a certificate for our Android 
Android app. So that certificate there, uh, it belongs to a different app. So we have to go and generate a new uh, certificate for this app. So I'm gonna go create a uh, new certificate and we already have a little publisher name here called uh, Elf Apps. And I'm gonna put the same there. I'll actually go and copy and paste to control C and here we have uh, control V. I'm not going to be worried about the country settings at this moment, leave it as it is. And the password that I would remember each time I'm going to go and modify this app, I would require that password. So better give a password that you actually uh, would remember. I'm going to go give a password of my own. and. I put the password and as you see the validity period for this certificate file would be 25 years from today um, so let's go and um, Android we want to save our certificate file we would want it to be in the same uh, folder as our uh, where our entire application package is going to be so I'll leave it there and it's calling itself times tables and it's a p12 certificate file I'll go push save there and I'm going to go again say okay um, and it gives me a little message saying that self-signed certificate has been created so I'm going to say now okay and I'm going to put the same password that I gen uh, that I put before for the certificate so here I go putting the password and I will say remember password for this session because each time you wanted to go and test your app or deploy your app um, you would face it would be asking you for the uh, password uh, but that will remember only for this session but if you're going to go save this file and then come back again later and uh, try to again deploy it would ask you for the certificate so you need to be mindful of that that's the reason where uh, uh, why i said that you should remember that um, that password there so now another couple of tabs that we're going to go look into is the icons we haven't created an icon for our uh, app uh, so if you need to have an icon so you go by 72 by 72 size and I haven't created that yet so I will go create a new uh, page here uh, with the dimensions of 72 pixels by 72 pixels and I'm going to say okay and I got that color there I'm going to get rid of that color um, actually cancel uh, so I just go here and I'm going to have a transparent background and let's go to the size for the moment it's uh it's 100 I'll just make it 400 so that we can actually look at what we are doing I'm selecting this text and say here T okay so I would go here and select a fancy font to make it a creative uh, something that would be appealing to little children so let's go here or it could be a simple one as well so let us go here okay oh that looks horrible let's go change the size of it, it still looks horrible okay and uh, Maybe we'll stick with this uh, times and that's an enormous font. So let's go with, uh, let's change the size of the font. Yeah, say here, let's go and call it. table okay our, our times table so you can call that and we'll go put that here and we'll give a um, we'll give a nice uh, style to that so let's go and uh, look for some 
here they are. They're the styles that you could go and use. And I would go and use a simple style for my font or yeah, I'll make it a bit colorful so that kids would like it. See, that's the way I'm going to go for it. Yeah. So R probably. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, it, it actually stands out and um, yeah, so there we go. So that's our, that's going to be our icon and I will say file save as. Uh, try to save it as a PNG file and call it um, TT icon, right? So now it's called as uh, time stable icon, right? And push save here. And now if you go to go back to animate and if you kind of go and uh, select from there, it's, it shows you TT icon, uh, actually cancel it because we're gonna have a problem with this I'm gonna say file save as we need only that particular that particular image there so let's go tt icon gif and let's go back here and look at that let's go back into animate and select it and now you see TT icon GIF. I was still asking for that. Okay, interesting. Um, otherwise, what we could do here is we can get rid of those pages that we already had. See, those first and the second pages that's causing some problem. So let's go and delete that page. Go back to 100 and delete that page there. And delete that page there and you go only this one here tt icon let's say file save and save as fireworks png and tt icon save it just say okay and now when you go back here into your animate and if you want to go select that file you actually will find the tt icon let's go here open it and that's how your icon is going to look like and the permissions are we don't need any um, permissions for this. Like you're not going to use the camera. You're not going to use. Uh, um, you're not going to write to the external storage. You don't need the internet. Nothing. So I'm going to leave it simply. Um, I'm just going to just leave it like that. And I'm going to say mm, I'm going to leave the language as well. So it doesn't matter. So these are the only things that we wanted. The general, the deployment, the icons at the moment. And we already set all of those. And then I'll say, I'll, okay, at this stage, I'm not publishing nothing. So I'll say, okay, and let's see what happens here. So we're all set with the publishing settings, uh, but now we are at the stage of actually making our app itself. So that's your layer one. And let's begin with the first part of creating our app, that is file and import, importing into the library your background so this is what we wanted we created this um, this background for this app so i go select that and i'll say open it goes in nicely sits into my uh library so let's go and figure out where the library is sitting so the library is not selected at the moment so if you go click on that actually that's your library that shows up and i'll just dock it somewhere here uh, for my convenience and as you see that's the table background dot fireworks dot png. I'm going to drag it and hold the mouse and then drag it and drop it onto my canvas. And as you see here, um, the size of that is the width is uh, 480 and the height is 800. If I wanted to align with my canvas here in fire in animate, I just go set X to zero and Y to zero and my background is all set fantastic so now i got the background and i need to begin to create my codes and i need to go and put in um scripts to make my app work so for which i'm going to go create a new layer here so when i push this button here it creates a new layer see layer 2 is created and if you want to go and change the name of that for here, I'm going to go and change the name of it by double clicking that and you call it 
action slayer a c t i o n s action slayer that's where you're going to go and put in your codes if you want to look at the code window you click on here and press f9 and it's going to go and open up your code window this is where you're going to go and type your codes i've already typed the codes i'm going to copy and paste it here now um and but uh, eventually i will go and explain what those codes are and you can uh, you can actually go and get some little code snippets from here so when you go click here it will give you some code snippets for the action script say for example uh you want to go and create some actions like click, click to go to the web page drag and drop play a movie clip all of that those are the snippets and uh, if you want to go in this air for mobile and i'm gonna go uh, so all of those options are available uh, mobile actions swipe to go to next uh, previous frame and stop or swipe to go to next previous scene and play so let's go here when i double click that it actually gave me a bunch of codes automatically so what happens if I, if the user is going to go and swipe on the uh, on the screen so it goes to the previous scene or the next scene but this is where i would um like we could go and modify the codes and we can put whatever the codes that we wanted so that's your code window i'm going to get rid of that code there i'll get rid of that and i'll close that code window there and i'll close these options as well so now we're all set to go and put the codes for our little app and we are all uh, set with the publishing as well and in no time we're going to go and put the codes and we're going to create this app so now let's go and put a bunch of other things that we wanted to uh, have in our app and um, we created an animation to make things look attractive that's our library uh, as you see there's only one picture there uh, that's your background so now i'm going to go here file and say import and import to the library and i'm going to select the boards right so i'll say that and it creates two files here a um, folder and also the gif animated gif so i can drag that animated gif and drop it here and you see that the transparent background you see the transparent background so i'm gonna go put that there yeah and we got no codes in there i'm gonna simply test this control and uh, test movie and at this stage i will say in air debug launcher mobile so i'm going to go click that now and then you see there's an animation here okay and that's what that's how it's going to look on your device your background is going to look like that and then there's this little animation here to make things look attractive now the only thing that we are left with is to go and actually make the app itself and put the codes and actually bring the tables up for which we actually should have a couple of ticks on your uh, on the main uh, canvas which actually tells what the app is so i have selected here courier new and um, the regular font and the color uh, i set it as to the dark color and i would simply go and say the color is actually dark blue um, i'll say multi application tables right and actually i can go and expand it or yeah i'm just gonna leave it like that for the moment and there it is simple and nice font except if i wanted to go and make it a little bit yeah at this stage i'm not worried too much about the font so i'm just going to leave it like that and it calls itself multiplication table now the second thing that i would like to get is a simple instruction there of what happens a simple instruction to tell uh, how you would be able to move to different uh, uh, different tables so we can simply say here uh, 
one more thing I wanted to tell you was this text that we created here is called a static text. There are two other different types of text that you can display. One is input text and then there is dynamic text. And I'll show you, we, we would be needing a dynamic text today because dynamic text is used when you wanted to put in information into the text box through your codes. Static text is just a text that just simply sits there and whatever you want it to display. So we're going to use two dynamic texts, one to show the multiplication table and another to provide a, a little message or uh, yeah, uh, that's what we're going to do. Or actually, uh, I would simply use, I will, I will just simply use this uh, text box here and I'll say swipe Oops. Why left R right for the tables? Cool. Okay, so here it is, and it says that, but my um, I'm not happy with the I'll control C that, control V that. I'm not happy with the title, so I would leave it like that. I will get rid of the this text here. That's my title, and I would want my title to stand out. So I would go with another better, other better font here. Um, something exciting, actually. That's that's too simple for a um, for a title. That's what I feel. Uh, anyway, and um, just looking for something cool. Let's say, yeah, multiplication tables. Um, that's okay. And uh, I can make it colorful if I wanted. And um, say, I'll just go choose this bright color and um, I'll increase the points. Actually. Let's make it 35 and see what happens. It's sitting there and still not quite happy. Yeah, there we go. I like that color there and actually it stands out. So I'll put it there and um, this one here, this little message that I have here, I don't need it to say that it's multiplication tables now. I would simply leave this information up here and make it actually a bit smaller. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So it says swipe left, not left, left or right for the tables. All right, cool. So let's go put that there on the top, right on top, right here. I can use my uh, arrow keys and I put it there. Okay, cool. Swipe left or right for the tables. Okay, cool. Now, and I got this multiplication tables right on top. Cool. I got two static texts there. I was going to have one dynamic anyway, two dynamic anyway, but now um, I changed, uh, like I just put two of those uh, static texts for our convenience. I'm going to create one dynamic text, right? And that dynamic text extends all the way down to and I say here dynamic text. Yeah, so now it'll allow me to go and change the dimension of the dynamic text. So I'm going to cover it, cover the whole of the screen or the canvas. Don't worry, it still is going to show us the uh, show us our background. So let's go here and wow, look at that. So we got this dynamic text sitting there with the dynamic text. You always need to give a instance name um, where you can actually be able to identify your um, your text. Uh, so here I'm going to give a name for it. I'll say times table one. That's the name that I gave uh, to that dynamic text. And 
I'm going to set the font properties here um, to let's go and select a strong font here because this is where your table needs to be shown and it needs to be a proper and a very clear uh, font so let's go out you can go with the regular times new roman or actually arial um, i'll go with the arial rounded empty bold and i would go for i'll leave it about um, about that size that should be okay or maybe about 25 and i'm going to change the font color to uh, something darker or yeah so i'll just use the brighter brown color okay so this is all set now and i'm going to say control test movie and in the mobile you see here there's actually yeah, it says multiplication tables, swipe left or right for the tables, and there are these little boards going, and you can't see anything in your dynamic text because we haven't put anything in there. So now let's go close that, and let's go back to our timeline and open the actions window. So this is where we're gonna go and put the, uh, put the codes and um, I have a bunch of uh, codes that I actually created and I kept uh, for my convenience. So control A, control C, and I'm gonna go put those codes here. Now, those are my codes for the multiplication table that I'm gonna create. I would go and explain each and every bit of the code. Yeah, uh, but before that, I used a variable called N uh, for number and uh, variable j dollar that's a uh, text variable like a string variable and uh, variable k is again a, a number and i'm maintaining a count and i created uh, and i'm calling a function called as load table and this is where the load table function is we are trying to put something into this uh, text which is our j dollar so we got to go look at that j j dollar is again here there's a reference to that plus string of whatever goes in there so i am trying to put that information into the text somewhere and as you see um i i am using this bunch of codes for swiping gestures um, this is again i i was able to get this from the code uh, snippet so this is where I would want to draw your attention to say so remember how I gave this uh, dynamic text a name called TT1 this is where I'm going to store the whole of my entire multiplication table into JS uh, uh, J dollar uh, variable a string variable and then I'm going to put that back into the dynamic text and let's see if this is going to work so I'll close that even our codes are set and I'm going to say control test movie and test in mobile. This is where you would actually go and appreciate uh, the simulator here. So now you've got one table sitting there. One times one, two times, one times, it goes up to one times 10 is 10. Now let's go here, uh, looking at the touch and the swiping gesture. So now that's the swiping gesture. So I move to the right, it shows me two, three, four, five, and it goes all the way up to 20. Okay, I'm gonna change the font soon. So it goes up to 20, but if after 20, when I'm trying to swipe, it's not taking me no way. So if I wanna go back again, so it takes me up to one, as you see, it takes me up to table one. Um, so it's not going to go any uh, down under one. So there we go. That's our multiplication table. And I'll go and change the font now. So let's go here. I'm going to go close that now. So testing was perfect and it worked well. And let's go here, change it to. Um, about about 50 would do right control uh test movie and let's see if this is going to work 
wonderful wonderful this is exactly what i was looking for so now um your text is more dominating than um the graphics in the background that's exactly what we wanted that's exactly what we wanted so we want the background to be there colorful and then we have that mes message there on the top saying swipe left or right for the tables and um, now it's got a little title there multiplication table what's more dominating in um, the whole entire canvas is the table itself that's what we wanted because that's the purpose of your that's the entire purpose of your um, app so i'm going to go to the touch and uh, swiping gestures so if i'm going to go here now uh, it actually is moving to the next table so if i'm going to swipe back now I, I just have to go and adjust the position of the table so i wanted to bring it to the middle and i wanted to uh, bring it to uh, uh, a little bit down so i'll just simply go close that and i'll bring it down like that i'll bring it a bit closer like that there we go and i think that's all set now so let's again control test movie and in the launcher let's go and have a look at that there we go so you got the table there and still not happy with the alignment i can actually either increase the size of my uh, font or i would actually go and change the alignment from here again so i go like that and i'm going further like that so control test movie and here i go okay so that was our uh, layer one and um in the layer one what we had was this um all the app elements and where we went and uh put a uh, dynamic text remember i went back to the dynamic text that's the dynamic text and which says we gave it an instance name called as uh, tt1 so now we're going to go and inspect the codes so the codes that we put in here i press f9 to pull up the code window that's the code we put in a very simple code here i am going to go through the codes uh, i'm going to go through whole entire codes now but prior to that we have to understand that there are also code snippets that are available here so when you go to the code snippets here, it tells you, it gives you some of the action script and um, HTML5 and WebGL, th that's not for focus at the moment. So for the action script, say for example, certain special gestures, um, like the ones that we are using now, the swipe event and swiping left or right, whatever you want to do and mobile touch events. So if you want to touch tap event and touch and drag events all of that there are code snippets available so if you go actually double click on the swipe event your selection must be uh, converted to a movie clip in order to apply the code so what it's basically telling us is if you have an object on your canvas you got to convert it into a symbol movie clip and then give an instance name to it when you give an instance name that's when you select and go to your code snippets and when you go and select the swipe event it should be able to give you automatic codes but that's what i have already done here i'll just go cancel this and then but in this code window you can actually go and put action script three codes for which you should be actually familiar with the codes if i'm going to just go and explain you this program that's not going to be enough for you to actually go and put codes like these codes are going to be different for each of the app that you're going to try to make and in order to understand that there are many things that uh, a programming language has to offer so as you see this is an object oriented programming and if you want to learn action script three fundamentals all of them are here how you put the syntaxes and how do you declare the variables so that's all here so as you see how do you go and declare a variable and all of that 
Okay, so we've used this one here, uh, the second one, calling it variable. So if you see here, that's where it came from. Variable n equal to zero, variable j dollar equal to, this is called as a string variable, whereas this is a numeric variable. So in order to understand what is a string variable and what is a numeric variable, you will have to go through these fundamentals. So, well, um, there's no point actually in thinking of making an app if you do not have these fundamentals or if you do not have basic programming knowledge. So for those who have, for those who intend to get some fundamental knowledge in programming, so functions, and again, we use certain functions here. We use like several functions. So this is what you call a so private function, my trace. That's the name of the function and what happens inside that. Then again, you go and call the function. Similarly, what we've done here is we declared a um, load table function and the load table function is yes, a function load table. What happens inside the function here? I will go and talk about it soon. Yet again, if you go, go back to the action script notes here. So those are the fundamentals that you would want to go say loops, and conditional statements like using if conditions. And um, so look at that. So if age is less than five, say so if you can go and use the if conditions and all of that. You first have to go and familiarize yourself with this basic programming concept of action script tree that you would be, and you will also familiarize yourself with the object oriented uh, programming concepts from here that's when you actually can go and put in the action script codes in your flash or your animate action script window so now let us look at what this program has to offer first of all I went and put a variable called n and I'm not sure if I actually use the variable anywhere so it's going to be a redundant uh, variable that I created but the most important one where the j dollar which is a string variable and var uh, as a variable count equal to one which is a numeric variable like pretty much you're gonna count one two three four now this part here is it says stage dot add event listener so whatever happens to the stage okay and the gesture given here is swipe. I haven't written these codes. I took it from the code snippets as I showed you from here. Okay, now it automatically generated this function f1 swipe go to next previous frame. It's just the name of the it's just the name of the function. Don't worry that if it's going to be going to really to the next frame. No, it's not going to do that. So function f1 and under f1, so if event dot offset x equal to one, which means if you're swiping to uh, left, it means that, or if you're gonna swipe to right, it will treat it as negative one, okay? So that's where you have to use your common sense and understand what the code snippet is trying to tell you. Now, when you swipe, initially you have set the count to one. So which means your first table will load so one times one equal to one and it goes up to one times ten equal to ten so the count is one so if i'm going to go and swipe it to the left what happens is it is going to keep on adding the count so it goes to two three that's what this means count plus plus count minus minus so increasing the count so when i swipe to my left what happens is what happens is the count is going to increase count is becoming two three four five and it it's allowed to do that as i told you see we also use the condition it's it's allowed to do that until your table count is less than 20. but if your table count is 20 and if you try to swipe it is not going to change it's not going to change the count similarly in the opposite direction if I'm swiping from swiping to right, so it keeps decreasing my count. So for example, the table loaded is one. If I swipe right, I said if count is greater than one, one is not greater than one, so it remains the same. But if my table is about 20, I swipe right, 
count minus minus, it becomes 19. 18, 17, 16, 15, if I keep swiping. And it can take all, or it can take me up to one. So here, pretty much we are determining, in this case, by swiping, you can actually move between the tables. Yeah, this is what we are trying to do. So you need a bit of a practice with this code here. You have to try doing things, and then that's when you actually realize what happens, and then that's what is happening here. So now here, uh, the count, by swiping, you're increasing the variable number, variable uh, count, uh, the value of the count variable by one, or by reducing it by one. Now, that's what you're doing here. In the next section, it says load table. So we're calling this load table here. We're calling this load table here. We're calling this function load table here. So what happens inside your load table? The function load table and I said j dollar equal to space and there's nothing it's empty so this is where we go back to what our j dollar was a j dollar here is a variable so if you don't declare that here it will throw up an error saying that um, can't identify this uh, uh, statement here so that's j dollar there and you have declared the j dollar here so it's a space think that there's nothing in there okay now here comes the loop so in this program what i have done the basic fundamentals such as declaration of variable using the conditional statements with the if and declaration of functions declaration of function and calling the function and at the same time implementing the loop so all of those fundamentals are implemented in this simple program so now if you're looking at the far loop here there's a new variable that i'm using that variable that i actually have declared where var, e var k equal to zero apparently there's a variable called k and i have initialized to zero and that's a numeric variable now let's start looking at it now in detail as you see, I wanted the table from 1 to um, the count from 1 to 10, which means like if I'm loading the 5 table, 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, 5, 5 times 4, 5 times 10 equal to 50. So that's why I wanted this. Now comes the most exciting and interesting part. Each time I am calculating the value, I am storing that information into a I will open up a simple text box here, uh, notepad here, so that I can show you what exactly happens. Okay, so the first time what I did was I had here, so let's say J dollar. So J dollar equal to, equal to space. There's nothing in there. Okay, that's what I declared here. For K equal to, uh, 1 k less than equal to 10 so now I'm gonna go here k value equal to so let's say here k and k value now is 1 okay cool now I said j dollar equal to j dollar plus j dollar is empty here j dollar plus string of count so the count I have set the count to 1 so I have to also have here count somewhere so I'll go here count and I'll say count is one right and then so I set the count to one and I said k equals to one okay j dollar equal to string of count which is string of count will have a string value of count plus whatever is in the quotation marks so that x pops up there x and string of k the k value is equal to one so that one pops up there and there's a equal to symbol so there's an equal to symbol going to come up and this is where i want you to pay attention count multiplication is represented by asterisk so that's why i said you need to have all of these fundamentals so we covered the variables we covered the functions, we covered the loops, we covered the conditions, but now you've got to look at the operators as well. So the operators is 
for multiplication, two numerical expressions, you need that asterisk in computing. So we'll go back here to our notepad and we'll go back here. See, this is what happens. So one times one, it prints the value. Carriage written. So that slash n represents carriage written next. Again, J dollars. So all of this is now stored into J dollar. Okay, all of this is stored into J dollar. It's no more space. This is what is there. Now the count. Now the k changes to two. So the next, in the next event, what happens is k changes to count remains one. K changes to two and j dollar what's get, what gets stored into j dollar j dollar equals to whatever the value is there plus which means one times one equal to one plus again j dollar string of count so that's going to be one and again times and again string of k which is two string of k is actually two now because um, the k changed here so one times two equal to count times k which means count one times two which is two so let's go here put two and carriage written which is enter so now count remains the same And k changes to three. And the current and the new value for the j dollar would be along with all of this would be stored. All of this is now getting stored into j dollar. So which is your string variable. And this time it's again as you see string of count which is one and times and string of k which is three and that's equal to there then again string times string of count times k which is one times three now i am not going to go through the whole entire thing let's consider let's say Finally, we reach to the point where the count is 1 and k value reached to 10. So at the time 1 times 10 equal to 10. At that time, k value terminates. See here, uh, k, the loop terminates because k is less than or equal to 10. That's when this is going to go, this loop would be performed. But since then again, k value changes. Let's say, for example, it changes to 11 because you said K plus plus here, K plus plus here. And after 10, when it becomes 11, it exits the loop. Now comes the most interesting and important part. This is where I would like to draw your attention to the canvas. So look at the canvas here. This was our dynamic text called as TT1. All right. And now, Let's go back to this word, uh, this notepad. And again, let's go back to our code. Remember, whatever the calculations we've, we've been performing, all of them got stored into J dollar and it's stored in a row using the carriage written. So one times one, one times two, one times three, one times 10. So it goes all the way up to like one times four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is now stored into J dollar. I simply said, tt1.txt yeah the dynamic text equal to j dollar so whatever is in here it goes into j dollar and it shows this is the mechanism of this bunch of codes so if i'm going to swipe to write if i keep swiping uh to write say to the and the count value keeps changing so the count value is six it gives me six table if the count value is 19 it gives me the 19 table if the count value is 20 it gives me the 20 value the 20 table so that is how this is going to work so precisely what i what i'm going to tell you is what i tell you is 
this is a very simple program and I have after writing the whole thing I have now found this bunch of code this set of code has no value at all so I'm gonna go delete that I got rid of that so I'll just leave it like that and I'll say control test movie and I'm going to test it in my so touch gesture so now I would like to, and now I would like to draw your attention to this say now the count is one and and I'm gonna go here swipe count is say for example four four and k value is one four times one is four four times four, two is uh, eight four times three is twelve and four times ten is forty it goes all of that would be stored into j dollar and that j dollar goes into tt one dot text so that's what i was talking to you and that's what i was trying to show you this is the dry run for the program that we have written which is pretty much checking if it's actually working and we see that it is actually working here so but if you if you are i'm gonna say don't for this one here i'm just going to go close that but by just understanding this program alone um you can't go and write um programs or you can't go and uh, create your apps but what what is really needed for you is you actually have to get certain basics from here the fundamentals action script three fundamentals from here and the object oriented fundamentals from here so that is action script three this will be enough for you to actually go and create the app but just before we could go and actually test it um i actually moved this uh, uh title uh, a bit down and uh, also my little message there and i have actually adjusted the dynamic text itself uh, here i actually went and added a glow property you could actually go and add and uh, uh, delete properties so here i went and added a glow property and if you want to add a filter um this is how you add the filter uh say for example if you want to add the filter it'll ask you what you want to do and i, I simply said glow and um, now i wanted my fonts to stick out um like my text to be projected so i gave a background color white color and i put the strength to 322 and um, the blur to the 22 pixels around it and uh, let's go now test this and then see what it's going to look like so i'm going to say here test movie and test movie in the mobile and there we go see look at that so that actually sticks out and um, the table is more dominating than anything else the graphics are there still attractive but what is more sticking out are the tables and um, with the background in white uh, the fonts and the letters can be seen actually clearly the numbers can be seen very very clearly and uh, it's it's kind of aligned now to the center all right so that's about it um, you you won't be able to reach to a perfect alignment in this um, uh, in this particular app because of the double digits that are involved and um, even at, at some stage it could even become triple digits as you see here uh, as the table numbers are going to grow and we're going to get uh, the triple digits triple digits from here so yeah um, for now that's what it is and um, I'm going to go close that so I'm happy with the way my uh, app is designed uh, uh, so I'm satisfied with the uh, title on the top which says multiplication tables and there's a little message for people to who are like if if the if the app is going to be in front of you and you wouldn't know what to do with that would make it really difficult especially for children um, and uh, leaving a permanent help um, uh, information on the canvas would be very helpful and handy so i just left it swipe left or right for the tables and each time they're stuck with something they just go swipe their fingers and uh, they're able to go to different tables and um, i got the little animation working perfectly and everything's like okay. so now now i am going to go and publish this yes so if i'm going to go publish this 
uh, it would generate an APK file uh, and that APK file would be going and sitting in the same um, folder where my project is. There are a couple of more things that we're going to go through. Uh, one is I'm going to go through the codes uh, and how what kind of codes are there and um, the codes for the swiping gestures for the left and right and uh, the the codes explain actually how the uh, table numbers are changing and uh, how um, the numbers are uh, changing from uh, up and down uh, by moving the left and by swiping to left and right all of that information and i'm going to uh, explain those codes to you that's one thing second thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go and test this on my own mobile phone and um, i'm going to record that video and um, show that to you and the third thing that i'm going to go and do is actually publish this onto the play store yeah so i'm going to go publish this onto the play store and um, where you can actually download this table um, onto your mobile phones and actually have a look at it and uh, at the same time um, you would also know uh, and you will also have access to the course the, through this video i'm going to make it available in this video um, so that if you want to try out something um, so those are the things that we can, I'm going to show you. And uh, there are a few special things that you require when you go and actually publish it onto the Play Store. It asks you for uh, particular uh, images of particular dimension. And um, we already have a image here. And uh, each time it asks for a particular dimension, I'm going to manipulate the same image. And then I'm going to provide uh, as a screenshots. And uh, I'm going to use some of the videos. Um, I'm going to use the testing videos uh, to promote the app onto the Play Store. So let's go close this. And the next thing that I'm going to discuss with you uh, or talk to you is about the chords. So there we go here. And um, these are the chords. Right okay uh, now then our codes are working perfect and our app is uh, all set to go and i'm happy with the uh, app interface um, and as you see here and the way the fonts are placed and the way the the way my dynamic text is placed everything and i have already set my publishing settings so here i'm going to go now uh, to go and publish my app so we're going to actually see this published app on the on a mobile phone for which so we, i got all of that and i got all of them all of my publishing settings perfect and um, all the images that i wanted uh, would be i might actually go and add those images here um, so i will just say here um, just see no i'm not going to add uh, anything except the uh, icon here which is my gif file so i would still need the gif file there so i just added that um and i would also go and add my uh, png file not necessary but just in case i'll just go and add that and um, it should be perfect so my version is 1.0.0 and deployment and i'll I'm going to go put my password here and I'm going to go say here uh, my icons are set 72 and I'll browse so that's the one it's already there selected not to worry much and I'm not going to worry about the permissions and I'm going to say publish with the permissions it is going to show me a warning but that's okay I'm going to ignore that warning now and um, the rest of the others are set for me so I'll simply go here and then say publish. When I say publish, what happens is um, it is going to go into my, um, it is going to create a APK file into my, uh, into my project folder. So in the same folder where it was, where there was a table and it's going to go create a times table dot APK. So I'll just go pull up that for you now. And I'll show you here it is and this uh, this this is our project folder and um, there is no time stable dot apk at the moment um, I will just go minimize that and I'll say publish 
it does take a while before it goes and publishes so it's now in the publishing mode um, PNG and have conflicting package okay so let's go here uh, that may be because of the because of this here I'll get rid of that and I'll get rid of that and let's go again publish that this time it shouldn't have no troubles so it's gonna go here uh, maybe it's doubling up so you didn't have to do that uh, just leave the files as it is and when you're gonna go publish it's gonna take a while that's the nice thing about this so if there are any errors it straight away pops up in front of you and tells you that what the problem is and then you can fix it straight away and if it's taking actually a while saying it's publishing which means it actually is creating the apk file as i told you the apk was packaged successfully but a warning occurred so ignore the warning because yeah usually you need to give some sort of permissions for your app at this stage you don't need so i'll just push ok and i'll press ok here and i'm going to close this okay so if you now go into the folder you will actually see the proper apk file which is here times table dot apk so that's your file there that's where your um your file is actually sitting and um now i have to find a way uh, by which i'm going to get that onto my uh phone so what i'm trying to do here is i'm going to use my google um, google drive and um, uh, I'm gonna drag my uh, I'm gonna drag my uh, I'm gonna go and drag my uh, APK into there so I'll just say times table is here and I'll just go drag it and then copy it there it takes a while it's gonna go and upload it and I'll just say here uploading one item left and it'll take a while and it should be uploaded in no time yep there it is and that's it oh no less than one minute left it's still uploading it and it should be seen here yep still there it should actually show up there it is so that's times table dot apk in my google drive the reason why i put it on the google drive is like this is more reliable for me if i would have connected my phone to the computer i could have actually uh, deployed it onto my uh, on, uh, onto my phone directly see where the publishing publish settings are and um where if i go here and uh, set it I can actually say deployment i can say install application on the connected android device but now i haven't connected my phone to the computer and yeah, it was going to go and ask me for the drivers so i couldn't be worried about all of those hassles and um, i simply um, published my apk and now it is sitting on my google drive now what happens is i go back to my phone on my phone i'm gonna go and um uh, access my Google Drive and from my Google Drive what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it there are going to be a few questions and um, a few questions my phone's going to be asking me and I should actually have uh, the I should I, I should actually have the developer mode uh, activated on my phone I'm going to qu quickly go and show you uh, how to activate the developer mode um for your phone like how to configure your phone for the developer mode and then you can access this apk file and install it it'll ask you oh, it's a third party um app uh do you trust this app you you can go and trust this app because you're the ones who actually go went and designed this so when you go click that and uh it's it goes and installs itself and the little um icon that we made before uh that icon would be there as well um, and you can drag it and put it on your uh, phone desktop or wherever you want it to have that see that little icon there will be there on your phone and if you open it from there you should be able to actually access your app so let's go do that and let's see how our app looks on the phone itself all right so now I am on my phone and I am going to go into my Google Drive uh, looking for the apk file and here is my google drive and i'll go straight pointing to the folder in which i actually have stored my 
uh, APK. There we go. That's times table APK. I clicked on that. And it's going to ask me starting up. Do you want to install this application? It does not require any special access. So you just go and say install and it installs. And as you see, you can see now the, now you can now see the uh, little icon for times table that we created in Adobe Fireworks. There we go. It said app installed and uh, I'm going to go and uh, tap on open. I just tapped on it and ta-da here we go here's our app and um it's got a nice uh, color and the animation is working perfect and uh, it gives me the message swipe left or right for the tables and one times one and all the way up to one time ten i'm going to swipe up to 20 just to check and um, see i'm swiping to i'm swiping all the way up to 20 tables and I won't go, I won't be able to go any beyond that. And this is the testing of my app. Uh, and this app is working perfect. As you see, background is um, quite appealing, but yet the text and the numbers are quite dominating. Uh, and you can see the whole entire table, uh, times table app is working perfectly. And I'm going to go two and one say so table one there we go so the app works like a charm uh, on the android uh, phone and uh, similarly we can actually deploy it even to the um, even we can test this on a ios phone or an apple phone but for now uh, we're going to look at how we are going to actually get this app onto the play store that's the second thing that we're going to look at and also I would be explaining you about the codes. So I'm going to go back now. I'm going to start okay, this. first of all, we uh, went and designed the background. Later on, we put the codes into it. Then we tested the app and it worked perfectly. And we then published the APK and we put the APK onto the phone. And on the phone, we went and installed the application package and it worked perfectly. And now, I'm in the Google Play console and I'm going to go and upload uh, my uh, publish my application onto the Play Store. So let's see how we're going to do this for which uh, there's already one here and I'm going to go create application and we're going to go. I'm just going to leave the language there and put a title for that. So the title will be um, times tables, right? So I'll go create that and let's see if it's going to conflict with that. No conflict uh, and short description about your app. Okay. I'm going to, this is going to be a really short description. Uh, times tables for children. Uh, I would say eight to 10 years right and full description this is an app to show the times tables from 1 to 20, 1 to 20. this app will say this app is suitable for the children who wish to learn the, the times tables and wish to learn times tables by heart that would help them with faster calculations calculations with the math that's problems the app is designed Have the swipe 
that features features this one registers and the uh, children can can swipe to left or right for more between the Nice. tables so let's go that's done and graphics and assets let's more if you haven't added localized graphics for each language graphics don't worry about that and let's go here say browse files add the latest one for one phone screenshot here to help phone users so browse files and let us see uh, yeah here it is so it's showing you the resolutions this is where we need to be ready with all of our resolutions and uh, let's say table here and I'm gonna put the fireworks file there and it's asking from one to eight screenshots so I've just put only one and that's enough so there we go and are probably I'm gonna go out here again get uh, my times tables so control C and I'll say here control V I'll go make this actually bigger And a lot more quicker. There we go. So it's time tables, right? And I'll this time change the style now. Uh, something that actually sticks out. Uh, clearly and yeah okay cool that that looks cool all right so I'll just leave it like that and I'll just go leave it like that all right so if I want it um, I'll go back to the yeah uh, add a high resolution drop uh, icon resolution icon so that will be 512 by 512 um, so we need 512 by 512 that's why I said like we need to keep this open all the time and this is only as you see 72 by 72 um, so we're gonna go here and create a new page file I'll say here new and we'll just look at the dimensions here uh, once again it's set uh, 512 by 512 let's go back here uh, to Adobe Fireworks and I'll say 512 by 512 and then I'm going to say push OK and this is where I have that icon and I'll say change the background here and I'll go back to time tables copy that control C and here I go and put it there and let's sit there and um, this time again I would go and change the font to 100 and let us go and that's my icon so that's time tables I put it there so that's my 512 by 512 I'll say I'll give it 512 and I'll call it 512 icon 512 icon so that's again fireworks PNG I'll save that I'll go back to my um, you can drag and drop or otherwise you can click on that it'll take you there and 512 icon I'll put it there now this is optional add feature graphic drop image here now add promo graphic drop image here uh, 180 width and uh, 120 height that's a promo graphic and um, you want to promote your um, uh, app and uh, 
this is feature graphic and uh, if you want a 1024 by 500 width so let's go here 1024 by 500 width let's go here um, 1024 by 500 let's create one file uh, I'll say new and I'll say 1024 by 500 let's go push ok and there we have now let's go back here Control a select everything actually Control c see this is what you should do so we got all of that graphics here and we have to make it suit to our new image let's go here make it smaller and I'm gonna put it here uh, oops control Z put them all here it is uh, it was asking us for a uh, 1024 by 500 width of image so I'm going here and I put the same image from my other file which has a width and height of 598 and 819 but not the canvas size though canvas size is always 480 by 800 but cancel that you go back here and this is where it's all sitting so now I'll go and change the canvas color to my previous color which was the uh, light blue one color so it's like that and I'm gonna go here change it a bit completely a light bluish color uh, I'm not sure if it's the same in the first one anyway so I put it there with that this time around I'm gonna go and pull it across so that my beach is extended throughout and the ocean is extended and there we go and I'll actually make multiple copies of this so that then again I'll pull it across and I'll put it here I can leave the sum where it is or probably to another corner like that so this time around I have I can go and change the font size to about 200 look at that control Z There we go. Things there and file, and I will say save as. Um, <clears throat> I would go and say ten twenty four icon. So I'll go put it there. And I'll go back here to my. And add that image here so there we go it's sitting there perfectly now add my promotional graphic I'm not interested at this stage and I'm not worried about it now mm -hmm. Pretty much it's got all of that. I'm not going to include any of the videos there, but it's going to be a little application. So I'll call that application category um, education. Here it is. So I chose the category education, and that's it. I gotta go put my contact details, but um, yeah, go put my contact details. Nothing else is required at this stage and 
for the tablet, it would ask me for a couple of more files. Add a one seven inch screenshot here to help tablet users to see how your app or app will look on their device. So let's go here, browse files. So we wanted a seven inch one, or oh, we'll just go with that one there and say open. Let's see what it's going to look like. Now it gave a uh, minimum length for any is 320. Max length of any site is max aspect ratio is 2 is to 1. That's what it said. So let's go back here. It's 2 is to 1. That was uploaded or which showed before. Um, let us go back. It, it would have been really handy if they would have given us the dimensions straight away. Let's see here if it's here. Okay. Maximum length of site is 3840. At least two screenshots are required overall max eight screenshots per type. So it's JPEG or 24 bit PNG no alpha. Minimum length of any site is 320 pixel okay so that is the minimum length 320 pixel we had that and the aspect ratio let's two screenshot okay let's go here that was about more than 320 pixel let's try another one here let's see if that's gonna work we could save your changes. Please try again. It's popped up with an error. Let's go here. Oh, there we go. So we got that. Add at least one 10 inch screenshot here to help tablet users. I'm going to go again. Select the sign and try to put it there. There we go. Fantastic. So it's asking for one again. So I'm just going to select that one and see if that's going to go there. That's a perfect size, which is accepted by every type of device. So it becomes green and then finally it's all here wonderful so it's application education at this stage i don't have none of those so. all of my detail appear to be okay now it has to take me to the next level so store listing that's where we are in and i release also cancel also save draft <clears throat> Gonna go to the content rating. You you must upload an IPK before taking it to the content. And but let's go here. App signing. Go to the app releases. Okay. Went to the store listing straight away. We provided all the information, including the contact details. Yeah, if you wish to provide it. No, not submitting. Yeah. Now save draft. Yeah. So that's what that's what was missing before. So now it became green, and 
Now let's go here. Uh, content writing. You must upload your APK before taking the content writing questionnaire. All right, so let's go here. Place production. Okay. That's what it said. Artifact. It's only uh, four aspects are, that are required in order to go and uh, actually upload your uh, app. So one is the app release, another is the store listing, which we've got it done. And um, as I've shown you, we entered all that information there. And um, I also entered my contact information. Now the second one would be the app release that we have to go to and address. And you have a release production that hasn't been rolled out. So it used to be in green color, the same um, icon there. So I'm gonna go here, press edit release. And the first step was enabled and then say add apk from library or browse files and drop your apk file here and this is where i'm going to go and grab my apk that's my apk there and then open it it goes and sits so now it's actually uploading right so it goes there and 35 percentage at this stage it's actually uploading the app. The interface is slightly changed uh, for the Google Play console. It used to be Play Developer Console, but now it's, yeah. So now, Version code is one and what's new in this role is nothing. Don't worry about anything. And um, it's come up with green tick. It's come up with a green tick. Now let's go to the content rating and continue. It asks us few questions. Oh, it's showing up. And, yeah, it's for the different countries. And um, let's go. That's sort of basic rating and let's go and apply that rating and that became green yep and now let's go to the pricing and distribution um, it is going to be a free app at this stage mm, and these are the countries it's not available uh, and let's go and select all of them now so we're making it freely available for 142 countries and releasing the app yeah and let's go here and answer these questions primary child directed if your app primarily directed towards children under the age of 13 and if yes you're required to opt in to the design uh, for families program because you indicated that your app is primarily directed yeah publication have ads no it has no ads in it Android Wear, no it's not, Android TV, no, um, managed by Google, turn on advanced manage Google Play features, organization schools use managed Google Play to choose the apps available to their staff and students, don't worry about that now, Google Play for education, distribute your app through education, yep, continue, does this application offer any form of app and purchases, no, save, and marketing opt-out do not promote this application meets android content guidelines it does and it does you do acknowledge that and let's see if primarily directed towards children under it's not primarily directed under 13 so anyone can go and use it so 
at this stage I'm going to say this application will be reviewed for approval when you publish it. Mm, probably I'm not going to go and put that either. Checking educator recommended section Google Play. Yeah, oh, we will put it there. Let it go for uh, let it go for approval. And so I think we've done all of that. Let's say save draft and then see what happens. Wow. Well, it turned green. Okay, what else are we left with? That's it. And finally, what we're going to do here, let's go back to all applications and then we got this one here ready to publish. There you see, it's ready to publish. So let's go push that thing there. And then I'm just looking at ready to go and publish it. Ready to publish, and I'll say here. It says ready to publish, but where's the little publish button? Yeah, your app is ready to be published. You can now publish your app by starting the rollout of the release in the manage release page. Manage release pages around here. Let's go check that again. It had been a while since I went and uh, started looking at this. So it said ready to publish and then um, I clicked on that, ready to publish. It took us, okay, it said you can now publish your app by starting the rollout of a release in the Manage Release page. So Manage Release page is here. Yeah. And let's go here. Make your alpha available and open closed alpha testing, beta testing, no country available, production countries. Let's reach. That's what it said. You have to release in production that hasn't been rolled out. You have a release in production. Edit release. And it's taking me to this page again. And say I'll say review. Start rollout to production. That's what it says. You should provide release notes for every new release. This helps the users understand the benefits of upgrading to the latest version of your app. So this is not a, um, we're not uh, editing it. We're just going to go start rollout to production and then say confirm. So we are in the second section. A tick comes up there and there we go. Seconds ago, full rollout. And now it's already uploaded to the app store let's go back to the play console and pending publication so we published it it is with google now so they will get back to us saying that if it's published or not and then based on that we will take it forward so that's it for the production it's it's little it's not that complicated as such so you go here and uh, when you say create application uh, so when you click on that from there, ah, it already started showing you the statistics. Wow, look at that. So yeah, it's in pending publication. Um, it should be really very quick. Google should be, Google is pretty good and uh, Play Store is pretty good actually in terms of approving the app. Usually it takes no time uh, unless, unless if there's something serious that they need to object to you uh, but otherwise it should be published there we go so it's pending publication we'll come back to that page again and it says uh, published right see as I said um, Google Play Store is just amazing like 
um, whenever you go and um, try to upload the application, uh, they're not going to be no um, hassles. Like they go through that really very quickly. And the status, like I published it about 10 minutes ago, it's now in the store listing. I'm so excited now to actually go and check it on the Play Store itself. So um, I'll just go here. Um, I'll say Play Store. See if it's in Play Store. Yeah, it is in Play Store, Google Play Store, play.google.com. And let's say Elf Apps. That's the name of our app. Uh, oh, no, all of this. I'll say Elf's Interactive Solar System. I'll say that. Yeah, here it is. That's actually, there we go. I, I went through that uh, app name and here it is times tables elf apps educational and learning I go click on that it tells me all of this information is available now look at that view details flag us yeah whatever it is and um, so you go here those are the those are the images that are available and here it is if you want to go install that so this app is compatible with all your devices that's come up that that's something it comes up this app is a, this is an app to show the times tables from 1 to 20 this app is suitable for children who wish to learn the times tables all of that information that we put in look at that it's on the google play store and then people can go and use it so if you have an idea if you have a if you have a world changing idea, pretty much you've been shown with how to go and design an application. I started from uh, scratch. So basically you started designing your background for your app and then you started uh, putting in the graphic elements into your uh, canvas and eventually um, planning what's gonna happen with your app and then putting in appropriate codes testing it out and publishing it onto the device and uh, moving it onto your mobile phone and checking how things worked on the mobile phone and eventually you went to the stage of actually publishing the app itself so now it is there and it's on the play store so now i am on my mobile phone i'm going to go to the play store and um, as you see on my play store actually my our app actually shows up here so so look at that that's times tables and if you want to go and install that app you can and there are other other apps in, in, installed by other users are here and from the same elf apps and um it's called education learning and fun apps so now i'm going to go here and install it and let's see what happens It's a downloading and verified by Play Protect, and it's educational, and it's downloading it now. See, we actually downloaded it from, uh, if you remember, from our Google Drive, uh, but now we are downloading it from the Play Store. That's that's a lot more exciting to me because it's coming off the Play Stores, and there we go. If we go open it, ta-da! There is your app um, if you go back yeah it's perfect tested it out several times and then i'm gonna go press home button and see where it is sitting see there it is that's timetables times tables there times table right okay cool there we go